Welcome to First Impressions, where we give you our initial thoughts on video games, comics, movies, and TV shows. Um, so we just watched Korra The Last Explorer, which is about... Well, that's um, not at yeah, all what it's called. It's in the future where um, Dora's cousin, Korra, <laughs> <laughs> um, is a descendant of the Na'vi. Right. And so that's why she's no longer blue. That's the reason. Right? Yep. And, um... Yeah, we saw the season finale of this, uh, this season. Like, right. What was it? Right. What, what was season it? was it? Season three. three. Yeah. Yeah, and I've never watched um, Korra: The Last Explorer except for uh, like the first couple episodes of the first season, and then I just saw the whole third. Yeah. It was amazing. It's really good. I was impressed. The, the actual show that we watched was really good. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I give it a, like four to five stars. Yeah, I give it a five there. star. I really like yeah, it. Yeah, I could give it five. That's probably one of the best questions I've ever seen. Um, and also, Jason just uh, explored a new game called Ether Lord yes. on iPad. Or the iPad. iPad. It's, How is that? Eh, it's alright. It's yeah. another one of those fight things, keys thing. But they don't have buildings where you have to save money, and yeah, there's, there's no energy stamina bars where you can only play so much because you run out of Yeah, yeah, you get more energy by fighting. More things. That's pretty cool. It sounds like Hearthstone. Um, so this week we're doing comics well, what's, for. What's your name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Carlito Ramanis. Okay, and I am Jason Headley. Yes, and um, this week we're doing uh, comics for September 3rd? Yeah. Yeah, 2013. And Jason... 14. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 2014. I can't talk. Um, anyways, uh, Jason, tell us about the system of the rating. Alright, so we do rate out of a five-star system. That's two stars for our work, two stars for writing, and one very special star if we think it deserves one. I think that's kind of the same as how we rated Cora. It smells so like cat poop. Oh, yes it does. Our roommate's cat pooped. And it's very upsetting. Alright. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. Batman Eternal number 22. Bling! Fast, fast, fast. Let's do this fast. I liked it. Good. Oh, wait. Just <laughs> I, I did like it. It was good. Um, good artwork, good writing. Uh, nothing was oh, confusing. You know I didn't... The artwork I just thought was okay. Eh, yeah, it was all right. I mean, it was fun. I liked... There was a lot of good reveals. I really like where they're going with... Um, with Alfred's daughter, I think that's really yeah. interesting. I didn't remember what the Beacon Tower thing was all about, though. But I mean, I get what they're doing with it, but I just yeah. didn't remember it happening. And I lied. I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. I gave oh. it like two. Oh, really? Maybe three. Oh, I, I like. Thought there was nothing no. really new in this. There the wasn't. reveal was already revealed. Yeah. And then the little thing about um, the Gates of Gotham architect was just, you know, it felt like slightly filler. Okay, so I give you a two. Oh, you well, a I gave it a three because it didn't annoy me. All right, this is the only book of Futures and, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Futures one and shots. One Shots. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Grayson, that I got this week. I was thinking about getting Ashen Comics one and that might have been it. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if there was another one. But uh, you read this. I did. Um, you know, we really like Grayson and I saw that Tim Seeley had a hand in this too. He wasn't the only writer, but yeah. I thought, let's try it out. It has a very interesting thing where it's moving backwards through time. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it fits in with Future's End and it does tell this insulated story that is the future, obviously, but, but still... I don't know. I still liked it. I didn't, I was afraid that these future stories would be very out of touch with the current storylines and, you know, not really mesh it well together. But I think they did a pretty damn good job because yeah. um, it wasn't just fluff. Um, even though it's slightly fillerish, it wasn't complete fluff. Right. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I really liked the format of them moving backwards in time. I thought that was really original and different and cool. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the artwork. I liked the writing. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would because anything with Future's End on it, I just assume I'm going to absolutely despise. But this was a lot of fun. And if this yeah. was how Future's End actually was, I might actually read it. But it's not. So we don't. Yeah, I thought it was good. What'd what you give it? I give it a three. I gave it a four. I want to write that down. Oh. Give it a four All right. for later. <laughs> All right, so next up is Cloaks. Cloaks, a brand the new boom. book from Boom, boom Studios. Boom, 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 boom. What do you think? Um, I love the cover. Yeah. Uh, the interior art is all right. It's nice enough. It's good. Um, I thought it was really interesting and odd. Something about the format of it. Something about it seemed really weird or different. And mm. it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, what else did I think about it? Um. Yeah, 
I don't know. It kind of reminded me of. Oh, I wrote that. It's kind of like the Banksy of magic. Yeah, you know, I really liked it. I like things that are very yeah. magic filled, and and I really love things. We were talking about yesterday how I really like things like the Prestige, and um, this book is just really awesome. It's kind of of that same vein of like magicians and the different tricks they have, and you know what they're willing to go to to perform mm -hmm. a trick and. I really like that. It was really cool. I'm There's excited to see a little bit more. Slight um, underground uh, uh, commentary, you know, like the first percent, I mean, 99 percent for one percent type of, you know, deal thing in there. Yeah. Too, you know? Yeah, it's, no, it's great. It's, it's almost got like, um, a lot of levels to it. The anonymous thing, and, yeah. you know, it's almost like social, social uh, gorilla very relevant. type of thing. It's very relevant. Um, but I'm not really sure about its future, to be honest. I thought it was kind of odd reading it, but I can um, put my finger around and I give it a three. Cool, I gave it a four. Next Keep up. Ass. I did not read Concrete this. Park, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, number one. I picked it up because I thought the art looked really great. Um, don't know anything about it, and then I, when I started realizing that it was actually a follow-up to another miniseries, so it's like another mm -hmm. miniseries, I was like, oh, crap ass. <laughs> um, but the art is great. It reminds me of, well, the inking reminds me of Allred, um, like Laura, or, well, Mike and Laura's art. Um, so that's nice. And the story, it's futuristic, urban, futuristic sci-fi, which is unique. You don't see a lot of um, black sci-fi, you know, type of books. Right. Where right. the whole book is, you know, really, you know, I don't know, is there any white people in this? Um, I, but so I give it props for all that, all of that. Um, but I gave it a... I can't remember these things. Where, <laughs> what is this thing called? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I give it a two or three. Two and a half! I'm oh. going to use half stars from now. All right. Freak that. Oh, there two it is. Two and a half. All right. Bowls. So I read this one, Figment number four. Uh, this is the penultimate issue. There's only one more left. Oh. It looks uh, really good, by the way. It looks I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure no one's reading this unless you're a kid and you happen to see the cover and you read it. But gosh, it's so good. It's so, 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 so good. It's got so much to it. It's dealing with both this fantasy world and what's going on in the real world. It deals so much with imagination and how and the power of imagination. The artwork is freaking gorgeous. Um, the writing is really sharp and on point, and and you know it's not like over the top deep, but this is a children's story, so I don't really expect it to be incredibly like in depth. But it's it's just so so good, and I am excited to get the fifth issue, and I'll probably pick it up and trade as well because I liked it so much. So I gave this a five. Five. A five. <laughs> what did you get for Grayson? Grayson gave a four. Okay. All right. All right. Next up, you read this. God one. hates astronauts. You know, when I looked through this, I looked at the R and looked like it looks crazy in the premise, and I thought, yo, this really reminds me of the auteur. And you know what? It's not by the same people. It's not. And you read it, it's just crazy, freaking awesome, insane, and funny as hell. I thought, I didn't read much of Chew except for the very beginning, and I didn't think it got as crazy in the beginning as it might be now, yeah. where it's, you know, very humorous and crazy out there. And this is how I imagine it must be, sort of, like now, especially with Poyo, the chicken warrior. Mm. Uh, this totally fits into that world. They have a relationship with a chicken. Oh. Uh, it's insane. I can't even describe it. And it was so much fun to read. Very interesting. And um, I gave it a five. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. All right. And the back here, one of the things that was said was, it reminds me of a disgusting piece of pottery thrown on a disgusting wheel by a pair of disgustingly Swayze-like hands. I wonder oh, if they I that. see. They say select critical outrage for and against God Hates <laughs> Astronauts. That's great. It's Love great. it, guys. Yeah. Fister of Iron, number six. Okay, so I do like this issue, but I also feel like not a lot really transpired in this issue. I mean, we kind of got to see Danny Rand get back onto his feet, and he's going to kind of like start over and like learn from the beginning, and because he's kind of lost his Iron Fist powers, and um... It's cool. I love the artwork as always. It's gorgeous. But not a lot, ha and I feel like not a lot happened last month either. So let's pick up the pace a little bit. But I did still like it. I still like the artwork. Um, yeah, I gave it a three. A toi. toi. Write that down. Right. Justice League number 33. They're a little bit high, huh? Yeah. Um, Get it together. The art is good, as usual. And the story is interesting, intriguing. I, I like the whole thing with this, you know, the 
the, uh, the whatever lantern power ring. Yeah. You know, it's a little twist on it, and she seems really dangerous and really unstable to be in the Justice League, to be freaking honest. Right, right, right. Um, but it adds some weirdness to the group, uh, and especially also with uh, Lex Luthor. Um, and I love the inclusion of the storyline with um, Doom Patrol because mm. I was a fan of Doom Patrol and this is yeah. like putting them in there and giving them more of a, um, a niche, you know, like who yeah. they are in comparison to something else like the Justice League. So I really like um, that whole um, like, uh, position, dynamic, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I mean, I liked it too. I the only, I'll, I'll repeat everything Carl said, so I'll just skip that part because I, you know, I liked it. I like the art. I feel like we've been playing at this whole Lex Luthor's gonna join the Justice League thing for a little bit long. That's true. I feel like that's been Didn't going really on happen? for like a year. So I'm glad that we finally just accepted it. it. But if we come back next issue and we have to deal with him joining the Justice League all over again, it's, it's getting a little like let's move, let's move on. It's time to move on. Everybody else is doing this Future's End crap. I would almost want to go for that without going on about Lex Luthor anymore. I'm, it's let's it's time to move on to a new storyline. So that was my only complaint about it. But other than that, I really liked the artwork. I really liked. What was going on, and uh, the story's good. Yeah, and this week we heard the news that Jason Fabok, I can't say his name because now I was, I always mess it up on purpose and I say Jason Fabok, and so now I can't say it normally. <laughs> Jason Fabok sure. um, is taking over the arts in November or something. Yeah. All I right. gave this a three and a half. I gave it a three. Let me write that down. Three! Jason said three. Okay, Lumberjanes number five? No, yeah, Lumberjanes number five. I think there's only going to be eight issues All of right. this, but it this. Was three was great so also good. and we finally are kind of starting to over introduce an overarching story before it was almost like a little monster of the week uh but now we're starting to get like there's a big twist at the end of this book that i don't know if a lot of people are gonna be happy with or not uh big twist i really like what they're doing with the characters um they're not actually boys there's raptors there's tons of raptors in this book um this book constantly manages to surprise me and i always laugh out loud while reading it i give it a five Aww. Yo, this is my. I have the same exact review for this one as one, two, three, and four. Pretty much, <laughs> it's 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 good. It's like a TV show. I I don't know what else to say about it. The art's good. It's it's just freaking interesting enough for me to want to pick it up again. All right, God, I don't know. God, Jesus, I don't know. So angry. <laughs> just kidding. Um, uh, can't read my own writing. Where did I where did I put this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Nail bite or I don't even have, oh yeah I do I have it right here. Um you know what this is why I said it was layered like some good TV show on freaking cable. All right, I give a freaking 4. Oh, a freaking 4. Like it. Wow. It's a freaking 4. Wow, I guess that's I'll terrifying. probably pick what up the, the hell next is going issue? on in the back cover of it. I'm thirsty. Right. The names. I have low tolerance for dehydration in front of this book. Names number one. Oh my god, I, I'm so excited about this book. All right, tell me why. It's a mini series which kind of sad and sucks, and I think you will love it. The setup is great. It's like a a movie, an action film, a great thriller, great opening intrigue, and there's this great badass female character. It's just so good, and there's a creepy ass antagonist. Um, I had so much to say about it. I wrote like this much about it from here to here. Um, I don't know. It's 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 great. I was wow. I was excited. Um, I great. gave it a freaking five. Wow. Man. The gonna, art's great. I'm gonna have to the read story's this. Story's fun. It's awesome. That's I awesome. wish it wasn't a mini. Ooh, awesome. Great job, Peter Million. Great. Next up. Oh, and the art is great. Oh, what is that? Nightbreed. Sorry. Nightbreed number four. <laughs> yeah. Nightbreed number four. You know what? This is getting better. And I kind of already liked it already before, but if it had, I don't know, stayed the same. I probably wouldn't have picked it up anymore after this, um, but it is getting better. It's introducing more characters and character origins, which unfortunately I think really only pays off, not only pays off, but pays off so much more if you're already a fan and you're familiar with the characters. So if you're not, I don't know, I don't know what people would think about it if they weren't mm -hmm. already. So because I'm already a fan and I like the characters, I give it four. Ooh, nice, great. Original Sin. Um, Original Number Sin eight. 8, this is the end. Um, you oh, know what? really? This is the Isn't end? Isn't it? Wow, um, yeah. You know, I I enjoy a lot of Marvel stuff. I think their universe is really tight and well-knit together, and so this is an event in that universe, and I don't know. I, I don't have much criticism. The art is awesome as usual. The story isn't crazy amazing either, but it's, it's, it's fun and good enough so that I didn't really care about any of the things, you know, like, not care about things, but I didn't care whether it was, you know, 
I was gonna not nitpick it, and I just enjoyed it. You know what I mean? I just kind of sat back and enjoyed it, and so I give it four. Awesome. All right, there it is. Original sin. All right, Rocket Raccoon number three. Mm -hmm. Um, I just really like this book. It's really funny. Um, the artwork is fan freaking tastic. I'm a huge Scotty Young fan. I I really like his work. Um, it's so bright. It's so colorful. It's so funny. Um, I like the second half of this issue a lot more than the first half of this issue because I feel like the first half did, it was a little slow uh, that once we picked up it was a lot of fun um, but it's so funny like it, it just it? Rocket Ra <laughs> yes it is Rocket Raccoon is really funny I like the villain that we're dealing with we're starting to see that maybe there's another you know there's another Rocket Raccoon uh, out in the universe and that's really the cool more uh, yeah the, the evil one and that's really fun um, what can I say it's just a fun story pick it up and read it it's, it's worth it. it give it a four Four. Let me write that down. Squitter number what? Four. Yeah. Four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Squitter number thirty. Three. I, I don't. Number no, three. Issue three. There it is. Sorry. Um, I feel the same way as Nail Butter in the sense that I am going to give the same exact review for this because though it does escalate and it's building towards something like this is the end of the movie if it were a film and it would be such an awesome fantasy film. It really would. I I love the tone and I love where it's going. It's very actually very um. I don't know if the word is cliche, but like the way it's built is very familiar, mm. but I like it. Oh, you know? cool. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. It's a very cool fantasy. <clears throat> it should be a, a Guillermo del Toro movie. Awesome. Um, if done right, of course, and I give it 4.5. Woo, great. Great art. All right, The Woods, number five. Number five, The Woods, number five. Um, I still really love this book, and I still really love the art, and I still really love the story, but not a lot happened in this issue. We did a little bit more character development, which is cool, because um, we did like a flashback and really got to know two of the characters really well, and that's awesome. I do want to see more of that, but when I'm so interested in what's going on on this on this planet and want to know more and more about it, stopping and breathing for a second to really get to know these characters. Again, I've said this about The Woods before, but this is a series that I feel like I ultimately want to read in trade and just read straight through at some point when it's finally out, because... I feel like the pace of having a whole month where I'm just learning about two characters is much harder than, you know, the pace of having 10 minutes as I'm flying through a trade of learning about two characters. But that being said, I did really like it and I gave it a four. Nice. Great. And finally, probably the biggest release of the week, um, with the exception of Original Sin, was probably pretty big, but this is probably the biggest release of the week. Death of Wolverine. De oh, I guess I'll start because you're still making notes. Yeah. Um, the artwork in this book is phenomenal. Wow. Wow, this, this book has great artwork. Speak me live in. Um, the story Speak itself, I mean, the writing is good, but the story itself isn't even that mind-blowing or new or different. But the I art is like so good that it makes it better just by having the artwork. Like, the artwork takes the writing to a new level because it's so good. Um... You know, I really, I really had to think about it to, to pull myself out and be like, well, the writing is just okay. Because yeah. the artwork is so good that it just feels like, a, you know, a, an amazing book. But I like what Wolverine's going through. He's never been one of my favorite characters because, honestly, I think he's boring. Um, I don't, I think he's, he's kind of like Superman for me. He just doesn't have a lot going on. Um, but I did really like what they were saying. I, there was a scene that involves... Um, Duke? No, 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 no. Uh, Fantastic Four. Uh, oh, yeah. What's his Mr. name? Fantastic Master Fantastic. <laughs> you think I'd be able to figure that? Mr. Fantastic, where he's really talking about like what is going on with Logan's body, and that was my favorite part of the book. Yeah, I thought yeah, that was I really well thought out that and really interesting. That was the best part of this book. Yeah, what do you think? The rest of it, I was kind of like, mm. yeah. 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 I was just meh about it. I, I yeah. give it a three. The art is awesome. Yeah, I give it a three as well. Um, I would like to see a little bit more story next month, but the art is great. I don't know that I'll come back next month. Ooh, wow. All right, so... The book of the week. I think I know what yours was, but what was your book of the week? I don't know. Oh, I, I, I thought you knew already, too. Let me see. You know... Oh, the, yeah. Okay. I yeah. What's your book of the week? Well, it's between names and God Hates Astronauts. It's really, really difficult. I don't know. Is God Hates Astronauts a mini or is it ongoing? It's just so insane and creative, but names, it's so classic and great. There can only be one book of the week. Which one is it? Which one did I see more excited about? Names. 
you didn't really say the name. Oh, I was that's I was sure you were gonna give it to name. Oh, okay. Um, number one. I can't believe this because it's such a silly little kids book, but I'm gonna give it to Figment this week. Awesome. Figment just was great. It was just just great. I, I'm so excited for the last issue of the series. And heck, if you guys want to make it into an ongoing, I will read it. Hmm. Cool. All right. All right. Well, next week we are going to be taking the week <gasps> off of are first we? impressions. We are because Carl is gonna be in Toronto at the premiere of Revenge of the Green Dragons, which he was in. Are you? You are. So that's really exciting, oh right? Oh my god. So we'll that's put a link amazing. to the trailer. I know we've done this before. We'll put a link to the trailer awesome. in the description so you guys can check it out. You can see Carl in it being a badass, so that's exciting. Um, Maybe but I should do a first impression while I'm there. You could. And, yeah, and definitely. Like, I just watched this movie. I'll try to be not biased. And, you know, like, yeah, that'd be weird. Um, this one character, Chicken Wing? Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, also, you can follow us on Twitter, at Carl K. Lee, at Cucamonga Cat. Check out our blogs. We do do bl weekly blog, blogging, blog, 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 blog. Uh, we'll put the descriptions down in, we'll put the links in the description down below. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. that's it for yeah. us this week. Cool. We'll see you next week. Yes, well, we no, we won't. We'll see you in two weeks. Or next, yeah.